name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to all of those who are with this, our last video that we will do uh, during the week to prepare for a Sunday. We will still have our live streaming of the Masses, so do not worry. You will be with us, and we will be with you. We gather as God's people wherever we are at the moment, knowing that he loves us more than we could ever ask or imagine. For the times that we have not shared that love of God with one another so well, let us ask for his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather all nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of abel as a prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat. As he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, he was following the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything wrong to you? Elisha left him and, taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. I 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love, for the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, Namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered, Let the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first 
let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, no one who sets his hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. I have something that is not easy to say. This is my last Sunday homily as pastor of Christ the King. And one of the things I am thinking about today is my first Sunday homily here as pastor seven years ago, 11 years ago. As some of you know, I had been assigned at an earlier time to Christ the King when I was teaching high school back in 1987. I had four glorious years here with Father Hammerly and with so many of you until 1991 when I was sent to teach at Baden High School in Hamilton, Ohio. Fast forward from that 20 years to July 1st, 2011. I came here as pastor, and I was happy to see so many familiar faces from my previous time here. And I was also amused that a number of you were still in the same pew I had left you in in 1991. I immediately felt at home here and quickly realized how lucky I was to be at this extraordinary parish again. After 29 years of teaching in high schools and seminaries, finally becoming a pastor was like a dream come true. And these past 11 years have only increased that feeling in me. But now it's time for me to move on, which is difficult, I won't lie to you. I had hoped to stay with you until my own retirement but the church has a different path for my priesthood. I do remember a wonderful, wise old priest once telling me, don't get too comfortable in any of your assignments. They could be changed in a heartbeat. You have made it hard not to get too comfortable here. Your enthusiasm for the parish, your hard work for the school, your willingness to support the construction of a new building, your gentle care for Father Frank during his illness, your commitment to your faith and your kindness to me have made this one of the greatest and happiest experiences of my life. And now I am called to move on to a new assignment. As luck would have it, our gospel speaks today of Jesus moving on proceeding on his journey to Jerusalem, telling his disciples to keep looking forward, knowing that he is with them every step of the way. And if you think about it, this is a message for all of us. We can't go through life wishing that things were the way they were back in the good old days. We have to trust that God has something wonderful waiting for us up ahead and that there is something important he wants us to do. I have been blessed that this parish has been part of my journey. You have no idea how much you have done for my life and my priesthood. And I know that a number of you even sent letters to the archdiocese asking if I might stay here. And I am humbled by your trust in me and your generosity it's much more than I deserve. I'm grateful for this and for so much more during these years we've been together. Just before I was sent here back in 2011, I had a conversation with Archbishop Pilarczyk, who had recently retired. I told him how excited I was to come back to Christ the King and be your pastor, no less. Here is what Archbishop Polarczyk said to me. Edward, never forget that your main task is to help your people get closer to Jesus 
and become grateful believers. I hope that in some small way I have helped this happen for you, but imagine my joy when I realized that you had done that very thing for me. Thank you for bringing me closer to Jesus. Let us stand. We unite our voices as God's people as we profess our faith, recalling the vows of our holy baptism. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us now bring our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For all members of the Church, may the Lord help us leave behind the things of the world for the freedom that only He offers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders and for all who seek an increase in charity throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, may the healing power of God and the love of neighbor comfort and heal them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of this faith community, may the Lord renew and deepen our faith and lead us to greater joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Jim McHugh, Donnie Isferding, and Michael Clotter. May they be welcomed into heaven and behold the Lord face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Ukraine and for an end to the violence in their country, may the hearts of those driving the conflict be moved to cease the suffering they have created. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these prayers we make in faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death. we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the 
Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. A spiritual communion prayer for those who cannot be with us in church today and are joining us through streaming or video. Lord Jesus, thank you for embracing me with your love. I wish I could be receiving you in the sacrament of the Eucharist today, but even though I can't, I know that you always love me and are with me in a very special way. Help me to welcome you into my heart and soul now and every day and let your light shine through my eyes, my words, and my actions. Amen.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Since the beginning of our experience of COVID, we have been providing this video mass for the weekend. And I want to thank our small congregation here representing all of you, wherever you are watching this from and praying with us. I'm grateful to them and to our stalwart uh, lector here, Mary Alice Manley, and the musicians up in the loft, and in a special way, uh, Elisa Fisher, who is uh, making sure that this all gets taped for you. We gather together as God's people, no matter where we are, and know that we are united in his love. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.